This is section 1.5 about multiplying whole numbers. Multiplication is just repeated addition with a different notation. So for example, if we add 4 to itself 5 times in a row, that's the same as multiplying 4 times 5. Either way, we get 20 as our answer. The first property of multiplication we're going to talk about is the multiplication property of 0. And this says that the product of 0 and any other number is 0. For example, if we multiply 9 times 0, we get 0. And if we multiply 0 times 6, we get 0. The multiplication property of 1 says that the product of 1 and any number is that same number. So if we multiply 9 times 1, we get 9. And if we multiply 1 times 6, we get 6. Let's do some examples where we're just using those two properties. So if we have 37 times 0, since we're multiplying by 0, that's just going to give us an answer of 0. If we have 0 times 22, we're using that same 0 property of multiplication, so that gives us 0. In this one, we have 1 times 183. The multiplication property of 1 said that if we multiply a number times 1, we get that same number back. So this would just give us 183. And the same for this one, since we're multiplying 8 by 1, we just get 8. Now the commutative property of multiplication says that changing the order of two of the factors doesn't change the product. So if we're multiplying 6 times 3, we can do it in either order. We can write it as 6 times 3 or as 3 times 6, and either way, we're going to get a product of 18. The associative property of multiplication says that the grouping of the factors doesn't change their product. So here again, we can group with parentheses, which means that we would multiply the 2 and the 3 first. That's going to give us 5 times 6, which is 30. Or we could group this the other way. So we could group the 5 and the 2 together so that we multiply those two first. That gives us 10 times 3, which is still 30. And finally, the distributive property says that multiplication distributes over addition. What that means is if we have a combination of multiplication and addition, we would call this distributing the 5 to both of the elements inside the parentheses. That would give us 5 times 3 plus 5 times 4. Here's some examples. We're just going to use the distributive property to rewrite each expression. In this one, we're going to take the 2 and distribute it to both the 5 and the 4, which means that we'll have 2 times 5 plus 2 times 4. That's all they're asking us to do in these problems, is just to rewrite these expressions. So in this one, we're going to take the 5 and distribute it to the 1 and to the 9. That's going to give us 5 times 1 plus 5 times 9. Now in this one, we're distributing the 10 to both the 9 and to the 6. So that gives us 10 times 9 plus 10 times 6. And finally here we're distributing the 15 to both the 0 and the 14. That would give us 15 times 0 plus 15 times 14. Here's some different examples of just doing multiplication. In this first one, we actually have three different numbers. We can group this any way we'd like to. Let's do it so that we multiply the 5 times the 2 first. 5 times 2 would give us 10, and then times 10 times 6 gives us 60. Let's do this one the other way. So let's start by grouping the 5 and the 0 together. And the reason I say that is because we can use that multiplication property of 0. 5 times 0 will give us 0. So then we have 9 times 0, which is going to be 0. OK, in this one, we're taking 37 times 6. So we're going to take the 6 times the 7 and then the 6 times the 30. Our first answer, the 7 times the 6, is 42. When we take 30 times 6, we actually get 180. And we're going to add these two columns to get 222. OK, this one up here, if we're taking 412 times 4. Let's write it out this way. So again, actually, we're thinking of that distributive property. We're going to multiply the 4 times the 2, and the 4 times the 10, and the 4 times 400 
and add all those together. So first 2 times 4 is 8. Then when we use the 1, we're actually multiplying 10 times 4. So that's why we put the 0 here to keep track of that place value. And 1 times 4 is 4. So we get 40. When we multiply the 4 times the 4, we're actually multiplying 400 times 4. So we're going to put two zeros in there so that we get over to the hundreds place. And then 4 times 4 is 16. That gives us a 1600 there. Then we're just going to add our columns. So we end up with 648. So now what if we want to multiply 40 times 160? We could separate the 40 into 4 times 10. And we could separate this 160 into 16 times 10. And if we use the associative and the commutative properties together, that means that since we've got all multiplications here, we can move these factors around however we want to. So this would be the same as 4 times 16 times 10 times 10. If we multiply 4 times 16, that gives us 64. So this is 64, and then 10 times 10 gives us 100. So 64 times 100 will give us 6400. Okay, one more. This time we've got, this time we have a three digit number here and a two digit number here. So we're going to start out with the five and we're going to multiply each one of these three times the five. So seven times five is going to give us 35. So again, we're writing down the ones unit and carrying the tens unit. Then we have three times five is 15. We have to add the three. So that's going to give us 18. So we write down the eight and carry the one over to the next place. And 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So that means we can write down both of the digits of that one. 1, now we're going to do the same thing only with the 2. And since we're looking at the tens digit here, this is actually 20 that we're multiplying by. So we're going to put an extra 0 in this row to keep track of that place. So 7 times 2 is 14. We write down the 4, and we're going to carry the 1 over to the next place. Then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. We don't have to carry anything that time. And then finally, this 3 times the 2 is 6. Now we just have to add the columns. So 5 plus 0 is 5. 8 plus 4 is 12. We're carrying another 1 up to here. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 6 is 8. So our final answer is 8,425. Okay, in this one again we have a 3-digit number times a 2-digit number. So we're going to go at this the same way. We'll start with the 7 and multiply each 3 of those times the 7. 3 times 7 is 21. We have to carry the 2. Then 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2 is 30. So we have to carry the 3. Then 6 times 7 is 42 plus 3 will give us 45. Now for the 2, this is actually 20. So again, we have to write down a 0 to hold that place before we start. Now we can take 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, and 6 times 2 is 12. Now we just have to add the columns, so we have 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 6 is 6, 5 plus 8 is 13, we have to carry the 1. We have 1 plus 4 plus 2 gives us 7, and a 1. So our answer is 17,361. Now notice in this one that the second number, the 800, is just a multiple of 100. So actually what we can do as a shortcut on this one is we know that our answer is going to be some multiple of 100. So we can just take the 8 times the 309 and multiply that answer by 100. And the way we can do that is to go ahead and write the two zeros here as a placeholder. And then we start with our multiplication results right here. So we have 9 times 8 is 72. We have to carry the 7. 0 times 8 is 0. And if we add the 7, that gives us 7. And then 3 times 8 is 24. So our final answer is 247,200. We can do the same with this problem, because again, we have something here that's a multiple of 10. So we know our answer we'll have three zeros at the end. And then we just have to think about multiplying 825 times 1, and that would just give us 825. So our answer is going to be 825,000. Okay, so finally, 
we have a four digit number and a three digit number. But we're going to start the same way. We're going to multiply everything on the top times the 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. We have to carry the 2. 7 times 3 is 21 again. Plus 2 is 23. So we have to carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. We have to carry the 1. And then 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Now when we go across to the 6, since that's in the tens place, we have to put a 0 here for a placeholder. Then 7 times 6 is 42. We have to carry the 4. 7 times 6 again is 42, plus 4 is 46. So we're carrying the 4 again. Then 4 times 6 is 24, plus 4 is 28. So we're carrying a 2 now, and 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2 gives us 14. And it's very important when you're working these kind of problems to keep your places lined up when you're getting the results of the multi no, multiplication down here. Now when we use the 9, since that's in the hundreds place, we put two zeros down here for a placeholder, so that we're going to start with our answers in the hundreds place. So 7 times 9 is 63, so we have to carry the 6. 7 times 9 again is 63, plus 6 would give us 69, so we have to carry the 6 here too. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 6 would give us 42, so we're carrying the 4. And then 2 times 9 is 18, plus 4 gives us 22. Now we just have to add these three results. So here we have 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1, 3 plus 2 plus 0 is 5, 4 plus 6 plus 3 is 13, we have to carry the 1, we have 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 9 is 25, we have to carry the 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus another 2 is 8, 1 plus 2 is 3, and then we carry the 2 down. So our final answer is 2,385,351. We have several words or phrases that indicate that we need to do multiplication. And here are some of them. So if we say multiply, obviously that's telling us to multiply. So to write this one in symbols, we would do 3 times 4. If we say the product, that means the result of a multiplication. So if we had the product of 2 and 5, that would mean we would be multiplying the 2 and the 5. And times is another word for multiplication, so this one would mean would be multiplying 7 times 6. And notice in these it doesn't make any difference which order you do the multiplication in. So let's do a couple of examples of these. If we're trying to find the product of 7 and 500, product means we're taking 7 times 500. And here again, since we've got the two zeros there, we can go ahead and write these two as a placeholder, and then we just have to multiply the 7 times the 5. So this would give us 3,500. If we want to find 3 times 1,310, again, that just means we're multiplying. So we could write this one out this way. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 times 1 is 3. So our product is 3,930. And finally, if we have one chocolate chip cookie, it contains 92 calories. The question is, how many calories would there be in 13 chocolate chip cookies? Well, we could do this by adding from each one of the 13 chocolate chip cookies, we could add on another 92 calories. That's just repeated addition, so that's the same as multiplying. So we could take 92 times 13 to get this answer. So if we're multiplying 92 times 13, 2 times 3 is 6. Nine times three is 27. Put a zero there for the placeholder, and then two times one is two, nine times one is nine. If we add our columns, we get six, seven plus two is nine, and two plus nine is 11. So the total calories in 13 chocolate chip cookies 
would be 1196 calories.